Hi, thank you for volunteering to participate in our Spring Bumblebee Queen Survey in 2018. So this is the, the second part of the data that we're hoping to collect. I've also made a short video on how to report data on nest hunting queen bumblebees. And this short video is intended to help you report data on your timed 15 minute observations of foraging bees. So after a queen bumblebee has founded a nest, then in order to rear her first brood of workers, she needs to go out and forage for pollen and nectar. So after the, you'll see bees nest hunting earlier in the season, end of March in April, maybe into early May, and then a little bit later in the life of each queen, she'll begin foraging. So this is the second kind of data that we're hoping you'll help us collect. And remember that it's optional, completely up to you, and uh, based on how much time you have and how into bumblebees you are, whether you'd like to collect data on both nest hunting queens and do timed foraging observations as well. So for this kind of data though, we ask you to watch a patch of flowers, either in your yard or in a local park, somewhere that you're allowed to be, a public area or at your home, to watch a patch of flowers for 15 minutes. And during that 15 minutes, this should be all that you're doing. Um, you want to devote your full attention to looking for bees during that timed observation so that none escape your notice. And this should be on warm days, at least 65, hopefully 70 degrees or more Fahrenheit. And also with um, sunny weather conditions and little wind. And then you'll see the most bees. So as a reminder, before you conduct your timed observation, you should try to identify the plants that you're watching, at least to a common name for us, so that we could find the Latin name later. Or if you know the scientific name, please do record that. And the goal is to identify all bumblebee queens that you see visiting the patch of flowers you're watching in 15 minutes. So you might want to have a camera handy that you could snap pictures and identify them later, or at least have a notebook where you can jot down how many you see of each type of bumblebee queen and which flowers they were visiting. So I'm going to walk you through an example of how to report data for this. Yesterday, I did a timed 15 minute observation on April 23rd. So we're gonna actually submit the data for that right now. So you can follow along with me as I do that. And the first thing it asks for is your email address. So we can come back and ask you if we have any questions about it. And then the date says April 23rd of 2018. And location, I'm gonna pull that from Google Maps where I was observing these bees. And I did my observation at Hiram College Field Station in a patch of yellow trout lily in the forest. Nice spot. And I'm going to steal the GPS coordinates from Google Maps by copy pasting them into my data sheet because there's not a good street address for this location back in the woods. I did my observation from 215. Oops, 2.15 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. And the temperature was beautiful. It was about 70 degrees and clear and sunny. I was in the forest for this observation and I watched an area that was approximately 50 feet long by 20 feet wide. This is a pretty big flower patch. You wanna target a patch of flowers where you can easily watch and see all the queens that are visiting. So you don't feel like you've missed any that were visiting during that time. And in total, I didn't have much luck. I observed zero bumblebees yesterday, even though I saw lots of other bees. So in in this case, if this applies to you, if you two were doing a timed observation and didn't see any bumblebees, here, this is where you would stop for this data entry. If you did see some bumblebees though, 
you would continue on to the next section where you report how many of each type of bumblebee queen you saw and on which flowers they were on. Here's an example of what that would look like in spreadsheet form. This is the goal for the data that we're reporting. I just had to make it be in a different format for the Google Forms. And then your responses autofill into a spreadsheet on my computer that looks just like this with bumblebees, bumblebee species as rows, and the types of flowers that you saw them on as columns. And then in each cell, there will be the number of bees you saw on that specific flower. So I wanted to show you this. You can see the overall goal of the data we're collecting. And you'll notice there's also an approximate number of flowers that you watched on for each type of flower. So for the, for the sake of example, I'm going to show you some mock data, or I'll enter some mock data, pretending that I saw a Bombus impatiens and a Bombus griseopolis on my patch of yellow trout lily. So let's go on to this next section. So in flower type number one, I was watching yellow trout lily, and I happen to know the Latin name of that is Erythronium americanum. In my patch of flowers, there were about 100 flowers of yellow trout lily. It was a beautiful forested hillside. We're going to say that I saw a Bombus impatiens queen. And remember, this is just sample data. I'll be removing this later from my data set. But we'll say we saw a Bombus impatiens queen, just one of them, visiting our trout lily, and a Bombus griseocallus queen, or a brown-belted bumblebee, and one of those two on the trout lily. Since we didn't see a third species of bumblebee, I would leave that blank. Or if you only saw one species of bumblebee, you would leave the species number two blank, and so on. And then there are several more sections to this data sheet. If you only observed one type of flower, say only yellow trout lily, then you would stop entering data here and just go ahead and submit or click through next, next to the end of the survey and submit. If you observed multiple types of flowers, say yellow trout lily and also something like a, a trillium, a large flowered trillium maybe that was in the same patch of flowers in the same habitat type, this is where you would record how many trilliums you observed and the number of bumblebee queens you saw in them, just like we did for the last one. So, but since in my example, we were only watching yellow trout lily, we're gonna go ahead and click through to the end of the survey, leaving all of this blank because we didn't see any more bumblebees, and then hit submit. Great, you're all done, good job. And so you can do as many of these timed observations as you'd like, or as few as your schedule and the weather permits. Just as a reminder, you're not under an obligation to do this every day or once a week, but it's my hope that you'll submit to us at least three timed observations during the queen foraging season from April to June or so. And um, that'll help you grow as a naturalist in bumblebee identification and also help us get lots of good quality data out of this. So thank you very much again for your participation in this project. And uh, if you have any questions, of course, about Bumblebee or Flower ID, you can reach me by email. I'll be checking my OSU Bee Research Gmail account any days when I'm not in the field, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again, and good luck.